how you all doing welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is ryan and in today's video we're jumping on to our day two on our new project we're doing some stone installation here all this is this um, private installation but i'm just putting some tape here I believe our biggest size so 8 inches the biggest size that we have here 8 plus half an inch joint we're gonna have to make a cut for this so we have to measure we have to cut this around so 4 inches so we're gonna cut it 3 and a half so that we have a nice joint running on the knee here so we're gonna measure for this guy here 17 and a half Yes guys, if you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, subscribe for more point video like this one, let the fun begin. So usually when you're working from a lower point, you want to always measure from the ledge up to the highest point you're going. And if you have to do a cut, you want to do it down at the bottom of the ledge there so that you work up, you work to come right flush with the flooring or the, 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 the veranda. In my case, I'm working to reach right up to the top of the pouch here. So that way we can continue over with our stone. putting some brick ties right now brick ties is what we use to help to maintain the structure of the building so it's important to put as much as you go usually every two feet or so sometimes every 16 inches depends on the type of stone that you're laying through stone onto my foundation now we're just plumbing up from the wall I measure four and a half from the wall out to the edge of where my stone started and I plumb a straight line go all the way up here I'm just taking some measurement from the sill down to where my stone is two reasons for this one reason is to know whether or not if you need to put a cut at the bottom and another reason is to determine the size joint you have to work in order to reach right up to your sills. So it's very important to measure as you go. As I go in the video, there is three rules to lay um, these type of stone. And as I go in the video, I want to explain to you guys the three rule of how to lay stone. So that way you have an idea of how to lay stone if this is something that you feel like you want to take on. So 
So you see earlier, I put that small piece of stone right there and at that, I break the band right there and I put the jumbo stone right in front of it. That's a perfect ex example of don't of try not to go um, more than the required um, length, which would be four feet. So as we go four feet, you wanna break it. But uh, right now, this is a small wall. So it's more, it's, 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 it's probably easier for you to go with less than four feet, being as the wall is such a small wall. But as I go in the video, I'll explain to you so that you have a better understanding of what I mean. So you see, I put this medium stone right beside this jumbo stone here automatically you would have to put that medium stone there because you don't want to go no higher than that jumbo stone right on top that sit right on top of my level here a medium and a small had up to be the same as the jumbo stone so once you reach up to the height of a medium and a small you have to put one right across to break it and if you continue to follow that rule automatically the stone will form its own pattern keep on watching you you learn as we go So you see I have a jumbo stone right in the corner there and I put a small stone right on top of that medium. By law you can't go no higher than that, otherwise you will break the rule of laying stone. If you're a new mason just started to learn how to lay stone you just want to take your time try and learn and try and do it the best as you can don't take no corners because once you do a good job it's automatically going to be a part of you it's going to become a part of you take pride in whatever you do and i promise you as you grow you won't even have hand to do to take on enough to, the amount of work that's going to come your way you know just be patient with yourself and you know eventually you will get there all of us hold here as a stonemason or a bricklayer we start the same place where you are right now and it slowly will work our way so just believe in yourself and keep pushing yourself watch lots of ryan video and then you go out there and practice whatever you learn um and you know as you quint you get it So right beside your window here, usually you want to measure three and a half inches from the window back to where you're going to put your sills. Usually we, we step back from our window three and a half inches or four inches sometimes. That way we have an overhang for our sills. <laughs> underneath the bottom of your window you always want to leave a space just in case you have any water to get in there we call that a weeping hole you want to leave a hole right underneath the bottom of your sill just to just in case there's any water get away in there later on it will escape and it will come through the hole also on the bottom of your window you want to leave a quarter inch space or maybe a one inch space just in case they have to remove the window later on it won't damage the window i mean it won't damage the sill so you don't want to have your sill sit right up onto your window at, at, at no time okay guys well there this is where we are now we'll just see we reach over there to our top of our window this side we're almost up to the top of our window and we're just working our way across coming up nicely Here we'll make a big jump. Sometimes my battery died, put it to charge. 
but you don't miss out anything anyway. All we're doing is just laying stone as we go. So we reach right up to the top of our window. Usually you want to work your stone so that way you go half an inch or a quarter inch above your window. That way you don't have your angle line sitting right onto your window. The same purpose as we explained earlier, just in case you want to remove your window. Also for... You also want to leave a weeping hole in the middle of the window as well just in case there's if, if there's any water go in, in the back of the wall it will escape and come through the, the space that you leave right in the center of the window Weeping holes stop going towards the window, you have to face it. Remember, you want to leave at least a quarter inch space between your window or beside your window. Yeah, that's it. Okay, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here. If you get value from this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed for more cool videos like this one. Thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.